So uh, this morning and next Sunday as well, we're going to be uh, living into and listening to the story uh, told in the Gospel of Mark about a woman, res a girl restored to life and a woman healed. Comes from Mark chapter 5. And this morning I'll be sharing verses 21 through 34. And it goes like this. When Jesus had crossed again, in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And so Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She'd endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, I uh, thank you for a story this morning of healing and hope. Open, continue to open in us uh, that we might be available to others to, for healing and healing ourselves. Amen. Just a few words this morning about this scripture. We will continue it next Sunday. For there's so many parts of this passage to, uh, that I think we can connect to. The story begins with Jesus by the sea. Once again, there is a large crowd. This comes up over, over, over and over again in scripture. A, a large crowd. And the word is it's pressing in on him. And so Jesus begins to, I um, mean, he hears this request from Jairus, who is a leader in the synagogue. I think this helps us dispel the myth that all Jewish leaders were opposed to Jesus or were out to kill him. Here is this one who has come to seek uh, healing for um, his daughter. Uh, Jesus readily agrees and we find them on their way, Jesus and Jairus. And as might happen to you, as happened to me, while I'm on my way to doing something else, which is very important, something else comes up. And that is what happens in this story. Along the way, as Jesus is moving toward this healing moment in the future, um, there is this woman. I wish we knew her name. All we're told is that she is one who has suffered hemorrhages for 12 years. And then there is this fabulous law, a scripture verse that I think applies to our day as well as um, her day. It said, this woman had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better but grew worse. Maybe you've known people that have had that experience. Maybe you yourself have had that experience. That you've done everything, physicians have done everything and you are feeling or they are feeling without hope. This woman was, was almost there, but not completely. Not completely. She does the unthinkable. In this last desperate attempt, she does the unthinkable. This woman with an issue of blood, this woman who would be un, known as unclean, reaches out and touches Jesus. Jesus' cloak, actually, just his clothing. She takes a risk of hope, a leap of faith, and she feels immediately the power of Jesus healing her. This woman in, a, in another moment of faith, then a little bit later in the story when Jesus says, who is this? 
Who is this that touched me? And, and his disciples are like, you can't know Jesus. I mean, look at all these people pressing on you. But in this next moment of, of uh, faith, we're told she comes to him and tells the whole truth. <gasps> right? Can you feel that also, what it means to tell the whole truth? What might she have told Jesus? We don't know completely, but what we know is Jesus' response. When he heals her, when he hears her, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I think it's so interesting. Jesus doesn't say you are already healed, although she felt it. He says, go in peace and be healed. Because Jesus understood that healing is a process. Her body was healed. That's what she felt. But there's going to be a lot of healing that had to take place to allow her to return into the community as the full person that she was intended to be. Go in peace and be healed. This acknowledgement of a healing process, that her being made well and our being made well, certainly there are moments like she experienced, a moment, a flashpoint, but again, also a process as her strength is fully restored as she returns in every way to participation in the life in the community that's a word for us this morning in this time of celebration as we look back to our past and as we look forward to our future to remember that this healing process of all of us this growing and being restored we claim our saints we claim our past. We also look with great hope and take the leap of faith into our future. As we go on this journey of wellness, we know that there are so many what Wesley calls means of grace, being in worship, being in prayer, and coming to the table. So this morning, as was uh, stated in, the, in uh, Wesley's earliest hymn uh, that we sang at the beginning of the service about uh, we're Jesus' guests. We're all invited to the table as we continue this journey of being made well as individuals and as a community.